Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Final thoughts for two fights taking place in Europe this Friday night. Tony Yoka versus Peter Milas in France. And then you have also Filip Hergovic versus the unbeaten Marco Radonic. And this is taking place in Klagenfurt, Austria. But what we'll do is we'll start with um, Tony Yoka and Peter Milas first. See here on screen, this is the promo poster. And also see here on screen, this is uh, part from a clip that Tony po uh, Yoka posted from the weigh-in. So what we know, Tony Yoka, 238 pounds on the scale scale for this one and that's actually the lowest for him since 2017 so clearly taking this uh, threat in Peter Milas seriously and Milas uh, actually weighed in at 222 and a quarter pounds so for a guy who's six foot four um, 222 pounds pretty light and actually it's not uncommon for him to be that low just two fights ago but uh, clearly coming in shape for this one so I like this fight and you can see here this is um, the venue Roland Garros obviously known um, for tennis etc great venue though for boxing so you look you'll be like right on top of the action for this one uh, in terms of the tale of the tape so you have Tony Yoka and Peter Milas they are both unbeaten prospects you've got Yoka 10 fights in eight knockouts and clearly he's faced a couple of decent guys uh, on his record so far one of the prospects that's faced uh, the best opposition so far so you have the likes of christian hammer johan dorper mikhail wallish alexander demetrenko dave allen uh, johnny rice uh, which was in his second fight as we know johnny rice just knocked out the unbeaten michael polite coffee recently so that win has aged extremely well coming off a win over joel tumway jeko that was his last fight out now fighting the unbeaten Milas. Uh, Milas himself is uh, 15 and 0, but has been relatively inactive. And I know a lot of people, uh, or some boxing fans, won't be too familiar with Milas because he's been fighting in Europe, sort of out of sight, out of mind, but also extremely inactive recently. Uh, last fight was in 2019, the end of that year. So he's been hit by the pandemic, etc. Uh, best win on the record, I mean, debatable between Francesco Pianetta and Kevin Johnson, but he had those wins in 2018. Good year for him. And since then, it's kind of just uh, all kind of come to a, a screeching halt in terms of the step ups and obviously the activity. But make no mistake, people Peter Milas is a good fighter out of Croatia, six foot four and a half. He is a live dog in this fight. And Joker coming in the sort of shape that he is, 248 pounds, he's coming ready. I mean, here's a clip from Milas' uh, social media. Uh, he's looking sharp here. Clearly some quick editing and just a couple of seconds sort of explosive type shots. But he is a good fighter. He's got good technique. He um, can be explosive. So he's a live dog in this fight. It's not just something that, you know, we should expecting Tony Yoke is just going to roll over him. And if he does, that would be an extremely impressive performance by Yoka. So this, uh, I think it's a 10 round fight. It's got the potential to go the distance. Uh, I think Peter Milas is no easy touch. And I know some people will say, oh, Tony Yoka needs to step it up. But for me, I think this is an appropriate level test and fight at this stage for Yoka, but also for Milas, this is a massive opportunity for him to come in and upset the apple cart. It's not a huge puncher, but he's a good fighter. There is the potential that he can take rounds here and make it tough and awkward for Tony Yoka, who still is the favorite and is expected to win. But don't be surprised if this is actually a bit tougher than um, you know people expect. And after Tony Yoka coming off his performance against Christian Hammer a couple of fights ago, Hammer's one of these guys that makes you look a little bit sort of average and ordinary. Some of the, the hype sort of and the buzz that Tony Yoka had been building, say from the Johan Dorpa fight, other wins earlier in his career, just sort of just sort of receded a bit. But I'm looking forward to this fight, uh, Tony Yoka and Peter Milas at Roland Garros here. It's a good fight. And if you want to catch it, actually, you can because um, ESPN, which has a stake in Tony Yoka, or should I say top rank, has a stake in Tony Yoka. ESPN is picking this one up. You can see here on screen, this is uh, from the press release that they posted. And this other fight will also be um, 
available as well. Uh, Philip Hergovich on the right here of the, the photo, I think 99% of people watching this video will know who Hergovich is. Uh, this fight between him and Marco Radonich is going to be on the zone. So very good for um, for boxing fans to be able to catch this. Both these fights on Friday, and this is um, in your. So I mean, typically a lot of these fights would be on a Saturday in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm, I'm used to watching all these sort of fights um, Sunday morning New Zealand time. So this will be a slightly different. Both these fights on the Saturday morning for me. But in terms of um, this matchup, not going to sort of uh, get too much into it i mean i've done a preview before it is what it is it's a gross mismatch marco radonich might have an unbeaten record at what is it 22 and 0 but there's nothing there it's a mirage he is going to get absolutely sparked out so philip hergovich has been saying in the lead up to this fight that um he's going to make marco radonich pay because he's been waiting and watching and wanting a fight sitting on the sidelines for all of 2021 and he said radonich is going to feel the brunt of his frustration and i would expect that to happen so hergovic uh, on the scale so he was 246.9 pounds so currently um he is what is he 12 and 0 that is actually the second heaviest that he's weighed in his career but i guess coming off that sort of period of inactivity maybe not surprising that he's just a few pounds over maybe where he should be but with this sort of opponent He's not going to have too much trouble. He's going to blast them out. Let's face it. So you see here the, the face-off with Radonich. So he's got the height, the reach. Obviously, there's a massive skill gap here. Radonich might be two, uh, 22 fights into his career so far. But the fact he's number 231 in the world with 22 fights shows you the level of opposition is poor. And I know a few people have come to um, the channel for the um, announcement video and sort of said, look, he's an unbeaten fighter. Clearly, he's got some power and some pop and he's in this. But um, come on. Come on, be honest with yourself. I mean, this is going to be over inside two or three rounds. If it goes more than that, then Philip Hergovic has actually, you know, failed to deliver in my view. But 246.9 and Radonich, I actually didn't catch his weight, haven't seen that. But uh, Hergovic to win and Tony Yoka, I think he will win. But um, it could be a lot tougher for him in that fight. Could end up being a points decision or, you know, perhaps Milos can uh, spit an upset. We've all been wondering about Tony Yoka. Is there something there? Can his jaw, you know, his chin be checked and cracked? So I'm still waiting, I think, for most of us to see, can he really be tested? We thought Christian Hammer might provide that. Didn't really sort of land too clean on Yoka all that often. But uh, Milas, it's all there for him to do unbeaten doesn't know how to lose i think he'll put up a good performance but in a losing effort tony yoka to win for me but wouldn't be surprised if it's much tougher than people expect drop a comment loud and often hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out